you might have the same problem that I do. Does your Toyota hood latch not latch like mine? If so, then this video is for you. All you need for this repair is a 10 millimeter wrench, a set of wire snips, and a local auto parts store. Throw on some socks and sandals, and let's get to work. This loop here on the hood is supposed to be captured right down here, and when you push down here, it's supposed to flip over and lock down. Unfortunately, there's a catch that doesn't seem to be catching on this particular hood latch. I'm gonna mark right here the location of this bracket on both sides so I can put it back exactly where I took it off. Use a trim removal tool such as this. I got this at Harbor Freight for just a couple of bucks. Stick it in here with a little plastic shield and remove the poppet. You can see that pops right out. Squeezing with a small set of pliers from the back end easily pulls these inserts out. Do so on the other side as well. Now I'm just peeling this plastic away from the body here. There's a couple of retainers down here in the bottom. I'll pull that off completely and show you exactly what we're dealing with. You've got these little wing base things. You can go behind it and use a very narrow set of needle nose pliers to squeeze those in. They pull right out that way. Um, as you can see, I used a trim removal tool for my first time. Second time, I would definitely use a pair of needle nose pliers. And then on the underside here, you can also see these little tabs that hold it in to the actual latch itself. And again, going in with a little set of needle nose pliers, once, uh, once these guys come out and you pull it down a little bit, they have access there and they pull right out. Once you pull the plastic sheath off, then gives you access to this 10 millimeter right here remove that. Using a 10 millimeter wrench, remove these two screws. I'm using a ratcheting wrench because I'm lazy. You can already see what the problem is. There's a spring in here that is obviously not connected like it's supposed to be. Let's take a look. Well, huh. in fact, that spring looks pretty much sheared in half. So that's the problem. We broke a spring and so we'll have to replace that spring or make this latch work properly. But I'm gonna pull the latch off and I'll show you how this all works. Let's see if we can remove this here. Here's the other half of that spring, right down there. So you can see where it hooks on. It's pretty corroded. Not sure if that's why it failed or just through excessive use. Either way, I'll keep the two halves and see if I can find a spring equivalent. One part of the spring attaches right here and the other part I'm sure you can see it down there. You see the little guy way back there with a hole in it. That's where the spring needs to attach, those two ends, and this would be a working mechanism. I'll find a spring, I'll oil this up, throw it back on, and off we go. Let's do some quick measurements on the spring. The spring length is 0.84 inches. The overall length is 1.6 inches. The coil diameter is 0.36 inches. The wire use is 0.04 inches. I found these universal doorman springs. These are for a throttle return spring and I'll do some measurements on it. Obviously it needs to be cut down and reshaped but I think these might work. This is part number 29005. Length of just the spring section is 1.46 inches so considerably longer so I'll have to take off about half of that length. Coil diameter is 0.37 inches. The wire used is about 0.031 inches, so this will work great. Here I just use my fingers to start to bend this. I'm gonna make this loop my connector loop. Once I've got it fully bent, I'm gonna cut off the end here so the total length of this is right around that 0.84 inches, just like the original. I've got this fully shaped and ready to be cut. And here is that fully formed spring. Now the only difference between this spring and the one that came out of it is the spring ends were centered on the other one. We'll see if that's gonna be a problem. I don't think it's going to be, so I'll fit it see if it works. To get this loop installed, I'm going to use a small plier. Uh, needle nose would be better, but I have kids, so today there is no needle nose pliers. I've caught it on that inside, now just to loop it around the second piece right here. Here's our brand new spring fully installed. Now I just have to screw it back onto the car. Before tightening these bolts down, I'm going to make sure that it fits right where those marks are that I made earlier. Spray the mechanism down with your favorite lubricant that also protects from rust. Check the mechanism. It snaps nice and solid. We'll release it, try it a couple more times. It 
Seems to work great. Last step is to replace this plastic shroud. The two little inserts down here, push that up into the bottom of the mechanism and then snap on the two outside edges. All buttoned up and ready for another 345,000 miles. Thanks for watching. I enjoyed putting this together. See you next time.